Okay, greetings, beloved. We are, we are sorry about what just took place. Well, today we are going to read from the book of Judges, chapter 19. I have entitled my message, Consider, Take Counsel, and Speak Your Mind. This is a story that took place um, during the times of the judges. And I want us to really look at this in a scrutinizing eye because the stories that took place in the Old Testament, as you read in the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4, and also in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 and verse 12, it actually talks about the importance of us learning from the Bible stories that they were there to encourage us that we should never waver from the promises that God has given to us. It will make our faith to be strong, to know that God will not lie and God will keep his promises just like he took care of all the saints in the Old Testament. And not only that, but also to give us warning that we should never deviate from the truth of the word of God, that those who rebelled against God were severely punished. So I'm here to encourage us this morning that there's a story that took place um, in, 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 the, in the city or in the, um, the villages of Benjamin um, of a man who was from the mountains of Ephraim. And this man had a concubine. And concubines in those days were like wives who did not have inheritance. If they have offsprings, their offsprings will not be treated like the offsprings of the wives, but they were like second or third or fourth wives to one husband. So this man from Ephraim, who was a Levite, had a concubine who decided to go back home uh, in Bethlehem. And four months after this man decided to go reconcile with his wife, and he brought to bring her home. And we know the story that when he got to Bethlehem, his father-in-law threw a party for three days. They were eating, feasting, and drinking. And this man, on the fourth day, he said to his father-in-law, I want to go home. And his father-in-law said, man, can you dine and drink with me for, yeah, for another day? On the fifth day, this man decided to say, I am going home today. And in the morning when he wanted to leave, his father-in-law said, can we have the last meal with me? They had the last meal, he was delayed, and then he decided to be on his way to the land of Ephraim. But unfortunately, the sun was about to set when he came to a place or a village around the area that was Jebus. Jebus is what is presently known as Jerusalem. At that time, uh, it was still under the, 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 the leadership of the Jebusites who were not part of Israel. And his servant said, we need to go lodge in the city. But this man said, we can't lodge in the city of strange people, people who are not part of the nation of Israel. And they continued. The sons, when it said, they were now closer to Gibeah of Benjamin. And when they got to Gibeah, they found no one in the city square. The Bible says they sat in the city square and there was no one who welcomed them to lodge in. And the Bible tells us that there was a man who was old coming from the field and he saw them sitting at the city square. He wanted to help them. He said, I will take you in just to spend a night with me because it's not okay for strangers in our town just to sit in the city square. And the Bible says, they said to him, yes, we are willing to lodge in your house. You don't have to feed us with anything. We have our own food. We have enough for our donkeys. And as they were sitting and drinking and enjoying talking, there were men from the city uh, of Gibeah. They saw this man with his servant and his wife. They came and they surrounded the house, started to pound the door. And they said to the man, we want your guest so that we can have sex with him. And the Bible says this man was so embarrassed. And he said to the men of the city, I am willing to give you my daughter who is a virgin. And I will also give you this man's wife. You can't do this 
to my guest. But they continued to say, we want this man who is your guest. And this man had to push out his wife outside. And the scripture tells us that these people raped this woman the whole night. And then early in the morning, they left her at the doorstep of the house. And when this man opened the door to be on his way home, he found his wife dead on the doorstep. And the Bible says he took her, put her on the donkey. Now, I want us to read this verse, verse 30. Judges chapter 19, verse 30. And all who saw it, there was no such deed done or seen from the day that the Israelites came up out of the land of Egypt to this day. Consider it, take counsel, and speak your mind. Now, this man took his wife, put her on the donkey, went home. When he arrived home, he took his, her body, he started to cut her body limb by limb, piece by piece. She dissected her into 12 small pieces, and he sent each piece to every tribe in Israel, 12 pieces, send each piece to every tribe in Israel. And those who saw what happened or heard what happened, they converged together. The nation had to come together to say, we have never seen such atrocity committed in the nation of Israel. And we are told that the nation of Israel brought in 400 men to go and deal with the tribe of Benjamin. And when they got to Benjamin, they said to the people of Benjamin, we want you to release those men to us that we can kill them and clean the nation from all this evil. But the men of Benjamin refused to release those evil men who raped and killed that innocent woman. And this is what is happening in our lives as righteous people. When you read the story in chapter 20, you, you will see that it was not only the men of Benjamin who lost, but it was the whole nation of Israel. Because Benjamin is one of the tribes of Israel. But the men of Israel had to fight against their own tribe. And they lost almost 26,000 men from the tribe of Benjamin. But not only that, the Israelites, they lost almost 40,000 men in that battle because the men of Benjamin did not want to release men who were evil, men who were corrupt, men who did not follow the right things. And, and this is what we are seeing in this day, that there are so many people who are corrupt and we know about it and we don't want to release them. We want to keep them as our comrades. We love them. We elevate them. But that's not how things need to be done. I was reading this story and I was perplexed by the event that the first day they engaged in the battle with the men of Benjamin. The men of Benjamin won and they killed 22,000 men from Israel. Then they said that these people, the Israelites, they went before God in Mizpah and they said, God, um, should we go and fight against our own brothers? And God said, yes, go fight them. They went there the second day. Israel lost 18,000 men. And then they went before the Lord and said, God, what is going on? Should we go and fight? God said, go fight. And this for me is really showing us that if we are going to fight against corruption, we should never give up. The first time you try to, uh, to, to remove corruption, it's going to look like we are not winning the battle. It will look like we are getting defeated. But they went before the Lord and God said to them, go and fight against corruption. They went and they fought. They got defeated. Then the third time when they went, and that's where they killed almost 25,100 men from Benjamin. And they actually wiped 
the whole villages of Benjamin, they, they touch everything in Benjamin. Only 600 men survived who ran into the wilderness. To, why all this loss on both the Benjamites and the Israelites? It was because the Benjamites, they refused to release few corrupt men. The, the Bible doesn't just call them people who were possessed by lust, but it says there were leaders of the city. People who were supposed, supposed to lead. When this man was looking for a place to lodge, there was no one to accommodate him. A normal person accommodated him, and then they went after him. And this is a situation that we see in a lot of African cities and African countries where ordinary people are suffering because of people who are possessed by the spirit of lust. What, what, what is it that makes people so corrupt? That people can steal money that is supposed to help the poor in, in the pandemic are people who are possessed by lust. Why? Because they want all the money for themselves that they can live all these fleshy lives. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about the needs of the people that are around them. They are only concerned about their own desires. They want to satisfy this thing in them. I know that this man, I don't think this man was homosexuals. I think this man was so evil, so corrupt, that they have had women in their lives and they were no longer attracted to women anymore. They wanted to experiment with men, which was a spirit that uh, will control people who don't know their boundaries. That you will steal until you do steal, even if you know that you don't have a need for this thing. I know people would go out and steal something from a supermarket. And then when they go out, they throw it away because they think this is useless. But they are satisfying a desire just to steal. May God help us. May God help the ruling party. May God help the people in the government that they have to isolate all these men that are corrupt. Because if they don't want, we are all going to suffer a collateral damage. It's going to affect all of us whether we like it or not. And we can't be quiet because we have seen examples before. And this is a spirit. If we don't deal with it now, we are going to suffer the same fate of what happened in the nation of Israel. Later when the men of Benjamin were scattered, the Israelites came together and said, but remember, we are a nation. And it means we are going to be 12 or 11 tribes. What's going to happen to us? But they already made a vow that we are not going to allow any men to marry our daughters. So they had to look for wives for, to, to help those men that this tribe doesn't get uh, extinct. Sad stories that you can read, but God is giving us an example that we can learn from these people. And I am saying to you, brothers and sisters, who are in government, and say, you cannot allow people who are corrupt, and you keep on protecting them. Okay, You keep on shielding them because they are your friends and your comrades. Uh, we are going, all of us are going to go down if this doesn't get uh, immediate attention from all of us. Because exactly what this man did to this woman that they raped her the whole night, left her to die on the doorstep. That's exactly what we are doing to the lives and livelihood of poor people in the continent of Africa, in our cities. That people are going hungry, people are losing their jobs, and people are losing their livelihoods while few corrupt people are getting rich, are becoming millionaires on the expense of the people who are supposed to benefit from the resources of this nation. So we've got to think and we have to take account and we've got to speak our mind. We've got to speak and say, this is not right. Just like John the Baptist who said to Philip, it is not right for you to take your brother's wife. The church can't just be an echo. The church must be the voice that can speak against injustice. This morning we are talking to you and say, this injustice will not go unpunished. The sad part is that it's going to affect all of us. Those men of Benjamin, 
they were like a political party. That they were, they were just a small drop in an ocean. But they refused to isolate the few corrupt evil men. And by that, the whole nation lost. I mean, Israel lost over 40,000 men. Benjamin lost 26,000 men. If you are talking about almost 66,000 66, men who lost their wives, children became orphans. Wives were made widows. Why? Because we, are, we protected few corrupt people. And I pray that God will help us. We'll be able to see beyond the future. May we correct our ways that we are going to be a nation under God, a nation that will not tolerate injustice. Do you know why Sodoma and Gomorrah was destroyed? Sodoma and Gomorrah was destroyed because rich people always oppressed the widows and the orphans. Take advantage of the people who are destitute. And I pray that this will not befall our nation. And we cry before the Lord and say, God, may the people who are corrupt be exposed. May they repent like Zacchaeus and say, whatever I took from people unlawfully, I am, we are willing or I am willing to give it four times. Or may the judgment of God be upon them. Because this is our nation and we are not going to be quiet about things. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to come before the throne of grace, to thank you that you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you for the people that are watching us and those that are not saved, that, oh God, you are going to change, transform, make their lives meaningful. We thank you for wisdom from above. We thank you for the opportunity that we know you that you are going to save them, give them a fresh start and a new beginning. We thank you for our nation, that we have a president and his team that have a conscience, that they will hear your word to remove those people who are like cancer, who are causing corruption to thrive in our nation, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that a new thing and a new day is dawning in our nation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for this great opportunity to come into your house and your space. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great and a fabulous week. In Jesus' name, amen.